What's going on guys, today we're taking a closer deep dive into the streaming king Netflix and its most recent quarterly report because it just had the worst first quarter in 8 years. And then we'll take a closer look at Disney and what they have to offer with their streaming services and ultimately what the best company would be to invest in. Um, since all small caps and penny stocks haven't been doing so great lately, I thought I'd change it up and show you guys some recession proof stocks. So definitely stick around and we'll get right to it. guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Guy Graywell and I'm not a financial advisor. My goal is to show you guys all the facts and have you guys decide for yourself on what the better investment choice is for the long run. But of course, I'll throw my opinion in there as well. So first, let's take a look at both Netflix's and Disney's charts to see their share prices and market caps to give you guys an idea of which company is larger and where they currently stand. So Netflix is sitting at around $505 currently and they've been one of the best stocks to hold in the decade. They are part of the FANG group and currently uh, due to this quarterly report that they just announced, they did take a pretty decent hit of dropping 8%. But if you guys look at the one year chart, that's not really odd because they dip around 5-10% every so often. And then taking a look at Disney, they're sitting at about $183. They've been consistently going up since they've announced their Disney Plus and what they're going to be doing with that. Their market cap's at $332 billion and they are a bigger company as Netflix's market cap is around $224 billion roughly. So let's start off by taking a look at Netflix's most recent quarterly report and get an idea of how it's currently doing. So first off, they reported earnings per share better than expected at $3.75 compared to $2.97 which was expected. So that's good. Revenue very slightly beat expectations as well so that's good. But the most important of all of this is that they only reported 3.98 million new subscribers compared to the 6.2 million that was actually expected. And in the same quarter of 2020, they set a quarterly record of 15.8 million. So that is quite a bit less from last year. And on this chart, you guys can see that this first quarter was actually the lowest they've ever reported in their Q1 reports. And the CEO said that this was only due to a delay in new films being released, and it actually had nothing to do with competition. Nothing to do with competition. That is mind blowing. It's hard for me to believe, um, and I clearly have a different opinion on that, but let's keep looking. So in this article on Yahoo Finance, the CEO says that, we continue to anticipate a strong second half with the returns of new seasons of some of our biggest hits and exciting film lineup. In the short term, there is some uncertainty from COVID-19. In the long run, the rise of streaming to replace linear TV around the world is a clear trend in entertainment. And I'm sure you guys see that all as well. But the part that really shocks me is that after he says all of this, that they anticipate a strong second half, they come out down here and say that the company only anticipates users to grow by 1 million. 1 million, and they think that they're gonna have a strong second half. Wall Street's expectations were 4.44 million, but let's try focusing on the positive. So looking at some ways that they will continue to grow their revenues, number one, creating new content. They're estimating to spend about $17 billion on creating new content this year, and that is more than all the other providers. So they will definitely have an advantage. For example, if they do hit some good shows, I'm sure they will gain a lot of subscribers because they will want to enter like the Netflix ecosystem and actually watch those shows. So that's number one. Number two, it's cracking down on password sharing. And they said that they are trying to allow only the people that are paid subscribers to actually use its services, which is fair. But the fact is that so many people are currently sharing, including myself, I think that people will have trouble adjusting to its high prices when this does happen. But this isn't a huge concern since they are continuing to increase their revenues. They have increased 24% year over year, and that's actually in line with expectations. So it's doing a fairly good job with that. But even with these, I just feel that it's not nearly profitable enough to justify over $250 billion market cap because at the end of the day, Netflix only has one thing, which is streaming. Streaming over the internet compared to its competitors. But now let's move on to Disney because I am very bullish on this company and I want you guys to be aware of all that's happening if you're not already. So first off, Disney had no expectations of gaining so many subscribers so quick. 
They launched in November of 2019 and their goal was initially 60 to 90 million by 2024 and now they're actually forecasting about 230 million to 260 million subscribers by 2024. That's a huge increase and these companies don't generally lowball all their estimates. They try to give you the best estimate possible for the shareholders and for the investors because of course if the stock goes up they benefit as well. And they're not too far from Netflix as well. Um, considering they launched in 2019, they, that's also when they bought Fox. They took majority control of Hulu, which has about 40 million subscribers already. They have Pixar, they have Marvel, they have Star Wars. That's also part of it. And they're more than just streaming, right? Because they, they own their own theme parks, resorts around the world. They have their own TV networks like ESPN. They have ABC, which is very popular. And also some of its parks are still closed and the ones that are open are not, aren't even operating um, at their full capacity due to COVID, right? And of course that doesn't really change anything in the stock price since investors are very forward looking and they already looked past that since the stock hasn't really gone down due to that. But Disney's been seeing rapid growth and it's not too far away from Netflix's total subscribers either. They're already at about 75% way there catching up to Netflix's total subscriber rate and let's not forget that Netflix IPO'd in 2002 so they've been around for quite a while and just like Netflix they said that they have a lot of popular shows that they're going to be releasing well Disney does as well. So this summer they're going to be releasing The Black Widow and Cruella in theaters and on Disney Plus with a premium charge and the way that COVID is going right now I don't think that people will have any issue paying that extra charge. So they're not really getting in any shortage of movies and shows to release. Here you guys can see that they're gonna be releasing like Mona in theaters. They have a lot of uh, unscripted shows as well, but they list them all out. They have a lot of National Geographic shows. Um, they have Star Wars shows and they have Marvel shows and movies. And the best part is that since they have access to Marvel, they continue to introduce new characters and Marvel has always been a huge hit in theaters. So now moving past all their shows and content that they will be creating, let's actually compare their revenues and their incomes of both these companies. Let's look at the annual report of Disney first. So all these numbers are in millions of dollars. So this is 69 billion and then this is 65 billion for 2020. So that's not a, actually a very big drop as I would have thought because only about 7% of its revenues are coming from Disney Plus. So it's a very, very small piece. And considering that a lot of their uh, resorts and hotels were shut down, they actually held up quite well. So let's like, take a look at the price to sales ratio for Disney. And if you guys don't know, the price to sales ratio shows how much investors are willing to pay per dollar of sales for a stock. So let's just say, for example, Disney makes $1 of sales. If the price to sales ratio is 10, that means you are willing to pay $10 as Disney gets $1 in sales. So let's take a look at Disney's market cap. It's around 332 billion. We'll divide that by about, we'll take the 2020 figure. So divide that by 65 billion. You get a price to sales ratio of about 5.0. And that's actually pretty good because if we take a look at the average for like an entertainment company in the S&P 500, it's about six. So Disney's actually sitting below that, which is pretty good. And if we actually take a look at their price to sales for 2019, it's actually higher because I know in 2020, they did take a hit and I'm more than confident that in 2021, 2022, their sales will be increasing a lot with their Disney Plus. So now taking a look at Netflix's revenues, in 2019, they did about 20 billion. And then in 2020, they grew it and did about 25 billion. So taking a look at their price to sales, they're trading at about 225 billion. And then we'll take the 2020 numbers. So divide that by the 25 billion in revenue that they did. They're trading at about nine. So it's almost double what Disney's trading at. But revenue is not the most important figure because let's just say you buy an apple for $10 and you sell the apple, same apple for $10. Well, your revenue is 10, but your net income is actually zero. So the most important figure is actually net income. So their 2019 net income was almost 2 billion. And then they grew that to about 2.7 billion. Whereas Disney, for example, did 11 billion in revenue in 2019, 
but they did take a loss of about 2.8 billion in 2020. So in this case, yes, uh, you can see that Netflix did come a little bit of ahead of Disney due to its lower costs. But looking more into the future, Disney also signed another deal on Wednesday. So this was released on April 21st, 2021. So it's very new. And the funny part of this is that Sony and Netflix actually announced a deal before. And so right now, Netflix has the right to all of Sony's movies and releases for about an 18-month window. And under Wednesday's deal, Disney would actually get the streaming rights to new releases after Netflix's exclusive window ends. And Disney's deal actually goes up until 2026. So Disney is really only just getting started. And it seems like Netflix is already in the mature phase of the business life cycle. Okay, now this is the last thing I'm going to be talking about. And it's one of my favorites. So let's take a look at actually their subscription prices. Starting off with Netflix. So for $9.99, you guys can get apparently good video quality with the resolution of 480 in 2021 guys 480 who even watches anything in 480 anymore and that's not good quality that's that's horrible quality i would never watch anything in 480 so pretty much you have to pay 14.99 to get decent 1080 quality or you have to pay almost $20 just to get 4k so you're pretty much tricked into paying $15.99 or $14.99 sorry so that's their starting price whereas let's compare it to Disney Disney here is charging around $11.99 monthly and so that's $3 more than Netflix let's get the calculator out okay so let's say that right now so 175 million subscribers Times that by, let's just say they increase the price to 15 as well to match Netflix. So they charge every customer an extra $3 a month. So that's $525 million a month times that by 12. That's $6.3 billion of net income, just pure profit. Because once these, um, like once all of this backend services are all already set up, increasing the price is money directly to your bottom line so just by increasing the price to 15 or 14.99 they gained 6.3 billion and that's more than netflix's total net income just by increasing it three dollars that is amazing so to wrap it all up netflix is going to see an increase in its profit margins and growth opportunities in international markets no matter what so that will help the stock increase as well However, it is priced pretty expensive like I showed you guys. Whereas Disney on the other hand, it has a lot more catalyst in the short term to long term as well. And the reopening of its parks and resorts and the growth of its streaming businesses are two very powerful businesses alone. So with all the contracts and intellectual property that they have is unlike any other streaming company and this will create long term growth for Disney in a streaming business. So overall, I would personally invest in Disney if I had the chance to. And that is all I have for you guys today. So if you guys do appreciate the content and all the research I am providing you guys, please go and hit the like and subscribe button down below for more content. And like always, I'll see you guys next time.